Hello, everyone. Welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Himvar, and today I am doing another weekly update. This is Liam's Leapings number 26. Um, what is the date? It's the 21st, I believe, of January. Um, 2023, of course. I'm in my pajamas, <laughs> um, which I'm normally not in this early, but I am. Anyway, so I'm just going to go over the stuff I read uh, this week for the most part, just give you an update if I feel like it, I guess. Um, well, this is my reading update since um, often when I finish a book, it takes like three months for that review to come out. So um, I finished, you cannot see it. Let's see, The Song of Roland by Anonymous this week. Here is the English version. Um, I, I mean, I read this one. Uh, I, I've previously studied these together. Uh, this one actually is pretty cool because it has the old French with the modern French. Um, I actually did a um, Poetry Thursday video for the first stanza of this uh, less one right here. Chavez Lijes. So that was fun. Uh, it's a nice epic. It's considered the epic of France, uh, which... It's pretty interesting. It takes place in uh, Carolingian um, Europe, uh, specifically it's in uh, Spain, present-day Spain, that is. Um, and it is about the battle uh, that uh, Roland and even Oliver, who are paladins of Charlemagne, fall at. So, yes, it's pretty interesting. Um, and then I finished Skadagrim in the Vales of Pagarna, finally, by Stephen R. Babb. Um, I really like the, the style of it, honestly. Um, it's an interesting contrast. Um, sometimes passages read almost like you're reading, like, uh, I don't know, something very easy to read, and other times it's, like, very poetic. So it's a very interesting contrast there. Um, it's a little longer than... Okay, I say this. It's not very big at all. I think this would actually work quite well with epic fantasy fans. Um, it's a little long. I feel like if you just advertise it as sword and sorcery, it's not just sword and sorcery though. Anyways, so um, it is pretty good. I like it. Uh, definitely, it's not a standalone novel though. There is going to be a sequel, and so it's pretty cool. I like it. I dig it. Picasso. All right. Um, and then I finally finish uh, Gene Wolfe's The Fifth Head of Cerberus, which uh, is quite a read um finally got this done first gene wolf of the year that means i've now read seven books by gene wolf the seventh one um the first novellas three novellas was probably my favorite um there's a lot to digest here though and the first one is just the story is the most straightforward i feel like and the the mystery parts of it which you kind of have in every wolf um are probably the easiest to guess. Um, the second one is a little bit more confusing, and the third one um, is very interesting, uh, but different. So um, it's very fun. I think if... How do I say this? I know Wolf intimidates a lot of people. If you want a book that will be maybe not super narratively entertaining for some people. Like if you don't want to think deeply about it, then this might not be for you. Um, maybe read the book of the new sun, uh, which is entertaining in and of itself. The story is just fine. If you want to think more about it, it's really fun. Um, but if you do want to do some deep thinking and you want to get into wolf style, maybe a good introduction would be the fifth head of Cerberus before getting into something like the book of the new sun, which is just longer. So this is not very long, not a huge commitment here. Um, so Really cool. It's got a nice um, Ursula K. Le Guin uh, quote on it as well. It says, a subtle, ingenious, poetic, and picturesque book. The uncertainty principle embodied in brilliant fiction. Wolf is so good, he leaves me speechless. And it's true. <laughs> right. I think that's all that I finished. Um, I started quite a bit. I've done a lot of reading for school as well. Um, let's see. For school, I've been getting through a lot of books. The one that's really of note here, um, I mentioned a few more last week. I'm still reading those, but the one that's more of note is the Iliad. My fifth time reading the Iliad. Um, 
it's a little long. I'd prefer my epic to be like the, the Song of Roland length or Beowulf length, but it is it is still good. So um, if it if it's a little bloated, I, I literally call everything bloated. That's not true, obviously, but I feel like I do sometimes. So there's that. I did read a little bit more in the Canterbury Tales. Uh, I read um, The Wife of Bath's Tale this week. Um, that was it, um, I think. You know, I might have read more. I might have done... Did I do the Clerks to Summoner's Tale too? I, I might have done the Summoner's Tale as well. I don't remember it being terribly long. I don't remember. The one that stood out, of course, is The Wife of Bath. Um, the Wife of Bath is a really iconic one. So uh, it's quite funny as well. Uh, which is a lot of a lot of the Canterbury Tales are funny, so um, it's classic. You should go read it, of course. And when I say classic, I, I mean like some people would probably put it in the top ten best books of all time, classic. So, uh, and then I read. Let's see. Um, I started a lot of things actually, so I want to mention these, and uh, I'm making slow progress on some of them, um, and there's reason why, kind of, I guess. So I started. The Long Ships by Franz G. Benston. I actually kind of had an idea in the middle of reading this one, but I'm almost halfway um, of doing like a video about like some Viking books, like recommendations for some Viking books. I normally don't do like recommendations like type of things, but I thought it'd be fun since I've been reading some Viking books lately. Um, I have one more I want to read and see if I like that. And then I could add that to the list as well. And then I might make the video uh, or maybe two more I want to read. One more, it'd be like a five book list. This would be fiction. They would not be nonfiction. I have plenty of nonfiction as well to recommend, but um, because I'm really liking this one, this would be on the list so far, even though I'm only halfway through. Um, this guy only wrote this too. And it's, it's, I think he was Swedish and it got translated uh, by this guy named Michael Meyer, if I'm remembering correctly, um, into English. And that's the only translation I'm, I'm aware of as well. So um, it's really good though. And it's quite thick. I believe the novelization of it came out in 54, same year as Lord of the Rings and The Broken Sword, but I think it was written in like the 40s. So, yeah. Anyways, it's really good. It's uh, very much reads like a saga in some ways. So, um, but yeah, let me know if you think a Vikings like video would be cool. Um, suggestions about Viking novels, kind of. <clears throat> All right. And then one thing I really wanted to read after doing um, the Elric live stream on Saturday, um, if you missed that, uh, it's about the first, well, it's about, well, it's about books two, three, and four. So the first volume essentially of Elric, besides the first um, novel, which we already did a video on a couple months ago, um, this it was on She's Only Evie's um, channel, I believe. Um, let me double check that. But uh, that was a fun discussion. And in it, um, I, most of the people there, or really everyone there, hasn't read much sword and sorcery or any. Um, and so I wanted to talk about like a little bit of the main other, like the big sword and sorcery names. And uh, I mentioned Ilmet and Lankmar, uh, which can be in my copy right here. Actually, it's it's in Swords and Devil Tree. Uh, there is a volume, which I will grab for those curious, called Ilmet and Linkmar, that has Ilmet and Linkmar. Ilmet and Linkmar is a novella, okay? Uh, this book has three stories in it. Ilmet and Linkmar is the last one. Um, it's freaking fantastic. It won a Hugo Nebula, even if it didn't win awards, it's phenomenal. Um, it's also in this one. I think the first book of Linkmar has it. Um, there's a lot of different publications of library, so I'm, I'm not even sure. I'm sure there's another volume out there with a different name that it also has it as you can tell we've been putting my kids toys in here and there's a bunch of balloons left over from my daughter's birthday party which was a few days ago um so i'm reading that i honestly i feel like i'm going to cry <laughs> when i get to a certain point i'm only about halfway through right now so um i have really good memories of reading that first one and you know it was interesting because this is my first introduction to liber and i didn't enjoy at the time uh, Snow Women and Unholy Grail all that much. I think I would like them a lot more on a reread, uh, which is the case for a lot of things, I think. Um, but 
I really liked Ilman Linkmar <laughs> the first time. And, uh, you know, that explosive ending, so to speak, really made me, you know, fall in love and, like, go on to read the rest of the Hoffman Grey Monster stuff pretty quickly. So um, that is really good. I'm, I'm really enjoying that. Um, I also started a – it is a novel, technically, actually. So um, I will – I guess I'll just be – secretive for a second because I mean there's no real reason to this will be announced soon I'm doing a little project with another uh creator artist on YouTube um and that involves reading uh a certain magazine which in issue one is a novel called Sinister Barrier uh you might know the magazine anyways um I read the first chapter kind of to get a head start on this project and I I really liked the first chapter. I stopped purposely after the first chapter. So, I mean, it barely kind of gets a mention here, um, right? Ill meant Linkmire. I started reading that today. So that's why I'm only halfway through. But uh, yeah, uh, Sinister Barrier is like a pretty, it's like right around the start of the Campbellian uh, sci-fi revolution. So what is considered the golden age of sci-fi. Um, but uh, it's technically considered fantasy by some accounts, um, considering it's in a fantasy magazine. Um, it very much gives me sci-fi vibes, at least at the start. It'll be interesting to see what it turns into. Um, it's kind of cool that they have a novel, a whole novel in a magazine, of course. Uh, but novel meaning probably something around 40,000 words. So that's uh, way shorter than most your novel, almost all your novels actually today. So I'm really enjoying that. Um, one I also barely started, so I'll just mention it real quick. I started uh, Gorel, Gorel, I'm butchering this, Gorel in the Potbellied God by Lavi Tidar. Um, it's pretty short, it's a novella, so I was going to read this real quick and then probably go into uh, Central Station so I could start um, reading some of, there's a lot of authors this year I want to read for the first time, and uh, Lavi Tidar was one of them. So I'm getting to start on that already, that's good. Uh, as far as books I got this week, um, other I've re so I want to, there's a few authors I really want to read this year, like Guy Gavin Okay, Lavi Tidar, um, Michael Ch Chabon, Chabon, I don't know how to say his name. He did an introduction for The Longest Ships, actually. It's a really good introduction. Um, I think he's the one who wrote uh, Gentleman of the Road, which is the book I think I'd like to read probably by him a lot. Um, there's other authors, though. Uh, let me look at my list, actually. You know, it's funny because I, I might just make a video on this, but that's, I don't know. Maybe that's not a, not a good enough. Oh yeah. Uh, Philip K. Dick. I've technically never read anything by him. Uh, oh, Umberto, Umberto, Umberto Echo. Uh, and then James Branch Cabell, I think. James Branch Cabell could go in this other list of classics. I really want to read a lot of classics this year. So I'm still getting more classics. The King of Elfland's Daughter by Lord Dunsany. The one that landed Gentry, I can think of, um, that wrote like fantasy fiction. <laughs> um, so I got that. It's not super long. I'll read that. Speaking of not super long, is Don Quixote, um, or Don Quix Quixit, if you want to say it that way. I will not judge you. Um, it, uh, yeah, uh, kind of a beat up used copy, but uh, I say not super long, but it's actually quite large. So uh, this is, as far as I'm aware, um, a really early novel and um what is considered a really early novel and it is kind of a humorous take at chivalric romances of the medieval period as far as i'm aware though cervantes wrote chivalric romance so i mean he's like making fun of something he loves so that's fine right that's generally the best uh poking fun right um is when it's someone who knows what they're doing it, otherwise it doesn't really work um <laughs> so uh right like uh Discworld, uh, Pratchett likes fantasies, hence why he can poke fun at it. I need to read more Pratchett. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I read one Pratchett, and it was like 2021, 20, I think. Oh, there's my Xbox turning on. It's a haunted Xbox. It turns on all, it's all by itself all the time. I need to unplug it. Um, so, yeah, that's it's basically my reading. Um, I think I got word. Um, there should be a anthology... Coming up, I'll just I'll just kind of leave that like vague as well. I should have a story coming out in an anthology, which is pretty exciting because it's sword and sorcery. So hopefully I can represent that well. 
Uh, and that was one of my goals for this year as well, actually, was to get some sword and sorcery published. <laughs> so I'm still sitting on most of my stories. Um, I have a few. I have one submitted to Old Moon, uh, which is the only story I submitted this year. Uh, then like one submitted to Fantasy Magazine, one submitted to Heroic Fantasy Quarterly. Um, those were submitted a while ago. They're just slow to respond. Um, so, but most of my stories I'm still sitting on. So I need to submit those elsewhere. Um, see if I can find some places. I just haven't felt like it for whatever reason. Um, I had this dumb thing going on with the uh, financial aid. I, school started back up this week. Um, and uh, I mentioned this on Discord actually, but uh, I didn't, I wasn't getting it. I wasn't getting my financial aid. I was like, it normally doesn't take this long. Like, so what's going on? And uh, I couldn't figure it out. I emailed them at the office. They didn't respond to me. And so I went in today and I was like, like, Hey, what's the problem basically? And they're like, Oh, well, it should show up in your portal that you, we need this document or whatever. And I showed them the portal. I'm like, there's nothing in there. And they're like, okay, I don't know why it's not showing up. I was like, Oh, thanks. That's useful. And it's like, I emailed you by the way. And you didn't respond and like, Oh no, we responded on the 18th. And I'm like, no, you didn't. I have my email open right here. I don't know what's going on. Like I checked my spam folder and everything. There was no response to that email. Um, I mean, I don't think they were lying, but I don't understand what the problem was there exactly. And what else am I missing? Um, I've noticed that on YouTube before as well. I was watching a couple of live streams the other day um, when, uh, and I'd see like, you know, when the cre uh, the person here, basically what I'm doing right now, can click on a comment and it'll show up on the screen. Um, I wasn't seeing a lot of the comments that were getting clicked on. I was like, wow, I'm like I'm looking dumb over here because I'm saying stuff that, you know, I wouldn't say based off of that comment was before mine or something like that. And I'm just like, but I can't see them for some reason. Um, so I don't know what's going on. Oh, my phone has just been so dumb lately. Oh, and my and my dresser is broken, and I lost my stocking cap. So it's just like it's been a week. It's like it's uh, I I'm pretty I'm a pretty positive person. So I, I feel like man, I was like man, if I was like depressed right now, like deep into the throes of depression, that would suck because I would not be happy like at all. Uh, it would be quite a week um, in some ways, uh, but otherwise it's okay. Uh, so. Um, it's, it hasn't been bad. Uh, I had my daughter's birthday. She turned three. So that was very fun. Uh, she's very, uh, great, um, little girl that's getting bigger. Uh, so, but, uh, that, that's basically my week. I did, I did do some edits on my, uh, like a story, uh, as of right now, I'm still calling out all that lies. Uh, it was fun because like I read it to my wife and it's like, Oh, that, I hope that story was okay. And you know, she always just says it's nice type of thing. Um, and then I'm like, talk about like, what the influences are, like the references are that are um, supposed to be subtle. Like my idea is like, I want you just to enjoy the story, but if you wanted to pick it apart a little bit, you know, maybe notice some other themes in there or whatever, like, like the first scene in the story is totally me trying to recreate the, the scene in Ghost in the Shell, uh, Kusanagi standing like on the skyscraper looking down at all the lights below, right? And that's totally what I'm trying to do. Um, I have a, a, like a reference to um memories of ice in there <laughs> and uh to beowulf and to arthurian lit plenty to arthurian lit actually um and a reference to um dragon bait uh, from uh the finder's stone trilogy by kate novak and jeff grubb um yeah there's there's plenty of little things in there um but i uh they don't matter in some sense, you know what I mean? Like the, the, the story is a story and if you want to pick it apart, that's cool. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm, I'm trying to play with things that that stuff is what helps me write actually. Like if it wasn't for that stuff, I just have a hard time essentially just writing stories that I find entertaining. But if I can make it more fun for myself, then that's, that's what's fun for me. So anyways, uh, hopefully I'll can read it someday if you want to, but I don't know what I'm going to do with that uh, yet. So, it's about 4,400 words right now, though, I think, so it's just gone up. Um, anyways, uh, this is Liam Williams Lyceum. Uh, it's a little longer than I was thinking, but um, what have y'all done this week? Uh, what are you going to do uh, this, this coming week? Um, got any plans for the weekend? Uh, yeah, uh, what's up, I guess? Uh, thanks for supporting me. I, it's fun. Uh, I like doing these videos. Uh, it's and I appreciate I appreciate people to talk to you I appreciate comments um 
and the interaction. I appreciate the friends, uh, even though I have a odd personality. Sometimes I feel like I'm autistic, but I have no clue. Um, and that could not be the case at all, so I don't want to like say I am. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyways, I, I, I suck at talking, by the way, to people. I remember I was actually at this at this little seminar type thing yesterday, and they're talking about how like you should get to know your professors so they can like write you like um, letters of recommendation, essentially, for like graduate programs. It's not like, I suck like at talking to professors because I just don't talk like in class, basically. Like I just sit there and I was like, unless no one, absolutely no one in the class knows the information and it needs to be volunteered, then I'll volunteer. Um, but generally, I find a lot of class discussions to be pretty shallow, and so that means all the other uh, <clears throat> uh, intellectuals will share <laughs> the thoughts that I don't feel like I need to voice anyway. So uh, so I, I just sit and I'm quiet. I, I feel like most people think I'm like a brooding type, as I just don't talk at all <laughs> in a lot of cases. So. Um, I don't want people to think I, I don't like them or whatever, but I just also don't like wasting my breath, uh, which maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll don't care, so it's fine. But uh, it's nice that I've been able to get comfortable from the camera. And I am comfortable in talking to certain people. It's just most people aren't worth the time, <laughs> just to be honest. Uh, so I definitely don't waste it if I don't have to. I'm all about that time, and I'm all about not being ignorant either. So I'm always making a fool of myself because I'm <laughs> completely ignorant. So anyways... Uh, leave a link in the slides and I'll catch you next time.